Hello again from the Farmer on the Wall. It's been a while since the last update. On the right here is the Giga Horse Farmer. Nothing has changed about this at all. Still 11,100 plots and um, one petabyte effective space. Uh, if you don't know what Chia plotting is, each of these hard drives have a whole bunch of plots on them. The plots are like lottery tickets. And then the lottery tickets eventually win and you get paid in a Chia. And if you're pooling like me, you get about 0.25 Chia whenever you win, but uh, you get regular payments from the pool. So each of these put out about a Chia every two days, this Giga Horse one. And then over here is the um, official Blade Bit uh, Farmer. I did make a change to the Blade Bit Farmer. Recently, you can see I added two more drives over here. Or sorry, four more drives. So these four more drives added about maybe 400 more plots. So with those 400 plots, I was finally hitting the limit of my CPU, this machine over here has an APU in it, which means it's a CPU with a built-in GPU, but that built-in GPU is servicing this Gigahorse farm over here. So the GPU in that machine and the GPU in this machine, sorry, iGPU, the integrated one, are both feeding that farm there, which are doing C7 plots, or about 78 gigs, and there's 11,100 of them. So that's hit about the limit of those uh, iGPUs, integrated ones. So what I had to do over here, if you can see, I put in, this is a 1030, NVIDIA 1030 Ultra Slim card uh, on the left here in the main slot, that one right there. You can see the video coming out of there. So what that does is it takes the stress off the CPU, which was pegging out at uh, about 100%, and I was starting to get some late partials. So now I have a discrete GPU. It's the weakest $50 GPU you can buy, but it fits in there. Then I have the APU, or the iGPU, feeding that Gigahorse Farmer, which leaves the CPU free to just kind of do whatever, manage stuff around. So that's the change that I got on this one. And if you have a 1030 for 50 bucks, they farm pretty well. I'm sitting at about maybe 700 terabytes here. So the effective space is about 900 or something like that. That's what C5 compression puts them about 84 gig a plot. Um, so they work pretty well. So I would... Recommend a 1030 if you have under a petabyte of raw space because it uh, the 1030 can handle it pretty well. So that's what these four drives are doing. I'm going to add probably two more here and then call it a day on this one. So that's the official farmer with the new discrete GPU. Also the APU, which is feeding this APU, which also has an APU. So the CPUs on both these things aren't really doing a whole heck of a lot except uh, managing the plots and stuff. But uh, the two... Ryzen 7 5700 CPUs, the integrated G iGPUs, are doing a fantastic job running this machine right here. And then that discrete 1030 is able to run all these. These again are C5 plots, so not super high compression, but I'm hoping to get up to a petabyte on both of these, so I'll have two petabytes total between these machines. Then on top of all that, we still have way over here my uh, Lenovo workstation which is farming no SSD, C15 compression, which is extreme 50 gigabyte size plots. And I got about, I had about 7,000 plots on here. But what happened with those 7,000 plots, I started to get timeouts. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and we'll talk about that. So now we're on top of the fridge where I keep the Lenovo workstation that previously had 7,000 C15 plots. And what I discovered with that was a couple things. You zoom in here, you can see this is the SATA power connector from the motherboard. It comes right off there. There's only one other SATA power connector right here. So how these workstations work is they have a power supply on the bottom. It's an 800 watt power supply. But the problem with that is it all feeds through the motherboard. So the whole 12 volt rail has to come out of that motherboard out of a total of two SATA cables, which I found out could not really power all the drives up here. So what I wound up doing was I had to add another uh, power supply up here and this is all this does is feed like 12 to 13 drives that the system can't so that was an interesting uh, learning experience because some of the drives would just quit out and disappear so if you have that happen you may not be getting enough 12 volt power and you might have to just put another system in here it does not happen with the other ones they said the rails on my PSUs for the other machines seem fine but because this is an integrated workstation again all the power runs from the motherboard right out of here into the uh, SATA cables. 
So that's fixed. And now you can see right now it actually has one GPU because it's actually plotting more C5 plots for that official farmer. But whenever it had the two GPUs in here, the two 1070s, I got about 7,000 plots before I started getting timeouts. So even though the benchmark says I can get up to 8,000 plots, it actually can only do about 7,000. And that just may just be because I have a slower card or a slower system. But this one I'm going to sit. I took two of the drives out of here and put them back on the official one. You see my lovely Lego creation for the drive storage. This is about the chintziest uh, drive storage you can do. It is not fancy on the wall or anything like that. Because I'm still thinking whether I want to stick with no SSD or not. But you really cannot beat the value. This gets about... I'd say maybe half a Chia every two days. So not as much as the other ones, but again, I'm only using about half the drive. So the 50% compression really does kick in and, and help out. Um, and this will, again, once I have that other GPU free, it will go back to dual GPU C15 plot farming, uh, which I just, why not? Because I'm not using the GPUs for anything else. Um, so I recommend no SSD. If you do not have a lot of drives, the 50% compression is amazing and the payout is real. Uh, but if you have the space for the drives, um, it takes a lot less power and a lot less GPUs to do that C5 compression, which I showed you. The 1030 discrete GPU and the uh, built-in Ryzen 5700G APUs can both handle uh, the C5, C7 compression from Gigahorse, no problem. So now let's head to the desktops of these machines and see what's going on. And now for the desktop version of this glorious Chia video, we're going to start with my workstation. This is my Ryzen 7 7700. It does not have a very powerful GPU, so I don't really use this GPU for anything. The 5700G and all those farmers on the wall is a lot more powerful than this newer 7700. But they are coming out with an 8700G, which is supposed to be even stronger, so I really can't wait to, probably not plot, but at least farm with that integrated GPU, because I am a nut for integrated GPUs. We actually have a discrete GPU here, because I am making C5 official blade bit plots right now. You can see with the 1070, I can do them about 9.97 minutes, which is not bad. Uh, filling that up with 128 gigs of memory, which I'm limited to 3600 speed, even though this has an XMP, which is like a factory overclock speed of closer to uh, 5000, I think. Um, but I can't achieve it because this CPU, so far, I'm told the 8700 is going to be a lot better at memory controller. It can't handle that speed with four sticks of memory. So if I do two sticks of memory, I can get the full XMP speed, but I can't do it I'm stuck with this 3600, which at least lets me do pretty fast plots uh, as it is. So that is the workstation. It is working away, making C5 plots for the official farmer. So let's head over there. The official farmer, this is using the official blade bit uh, CNI farm, and you can see that I've got duplicates and failed. They're not actually failed or duplicates because I'm copying plots over to this right now. But we can see that the, the discrete GPU I mentioned, the 1030, is more than handling these 8584 C5 plots. No problem, because you can tell the peaks on these are very narrow. What was happening on the Lenovo I saw when it was getting close to um, timing out is it didn't ever go idle. So if your GPU is sticking at 100% and not going idle, you do not have enough power to farm. But this 1030, again, with C5 plots, 8,584 of them, no problem. And for comparison, here's a shot of the CPU doing that same work. You can see these other cores are doing okay. Probably could have handled it, but just basic CPU tasks are starting to interfere. So I figure I might as well get a discrete one. And then again, this APU, which is the uh, built-in iGPU for the CP for the 5700, is working on the Gigahorse stuff. So this is the remote compute for Gigahorse. You can see incoming requests for that machine are being serviced by this a the iGPU. So I got an iGPU in here, and I got a discrete GPU. Uh, this one's working for the local farmer. This one's working for that Gigahorse. It's splitting the work between the Gigahorse and the um, the farmer on here so this one if we go to harvest you can see I've got 24 almost 25 percent extra space I got a little bit of C6s in here just put them on the external drives but it's almost all C5 the um, work for the compression I think C5 is probably the sweet spot maybe go to C7 is the top they have but that's a lot of extra power required you can see here it even says it's using the discrete uh, GPU to harvest these so this is the, again, official farmer using official C5 compression, uh, and it uses a lot less power also now that I have that discrete GPU 
versus using just the CPU. And now we're on that GigaHorse that I mentioned. Uh, the GigaHorse software doesn't actually have a GUI because it's all um, command line based, but the GUI does work since he upgraded to version two of the fork that he has. You can see this one with C7 compression. It's not directly comparable to the official C7 compression, but the GigaHorse C7 is 35%, so you get a little bit more savings here. I got 808 raw, and then I got a whole petabyte of effective space, so I'm effectively mining a petabyte with my 11,100 plots here. You can see I have almost, this is probably an anomaly, but I have no problem keeping up with this. That's using those two uh, iGPUs. You can see this is the local iGPU and it's also farming off that other one remotely. So between these two iGPUs for the 5700, you can see the CPU is not doing nothing. I like having an idle CPU because I know that it can perform all the maintenance tasks and everything it needs to without any interruptions. And of course, I do love my iGPUs, which I cannot wait to get that uh, 7800G processor and see what that can do. That would likely be able to run this all on its own versus 5700G, I gotta split the work between two of them. So this machine, again, not a lot has changed on here. If we go over to, this is the local server that's running requests for the C7. And you can see here, this is the actual interface for the GigaHorse plots. And you can see it also says 1.07. So um, this machine, I have not touched in over a month other than rebooting it twice for updates and stuff. Uh, and it works fantastic. I have zero problems with this. It's completely stable. I'm not gonna add or change anything to it. The official one, every once in a while, I still got some power problems, but uh, I'm working on those, and I will be adding a couple more drives to that one. So that is the fish farmer. This is the Gigahorse farmer, and now we will head over to the blade bit, or sorry, we will head over to the no SSD uh, farmer, which is actually pumping out C5 plots for me right now. So if you've seen any of my other videos, this is my beast, the workstation with 256 gigs of memory that I got for less than 250 bucks, which was a steal because the memory alone is uh, more than that usually, even though it's only DDR3 uh, or DDR4, I think. So I'm using up all the space on here. I'm plotting completely in memory and still it's taking 13 minutes. That's likely because I'm spitting directly to the hard drive instead of uh, NVMe like I am on the other machine. But also it's likely because this card is just a little bit slower. You can see this is a 1070 Ti, so it should be a little quicker, but it could be even the system that I'm using. All kinds of variables I don't fully understand. This usually is farming the no SSD plots, and I have uh, about 6,000 of them now. And again, that gives me about a half a Chia every two days with the no SSD. So it does add up over time, but I'm figuring out I'm maximizing my C5 plot creation right now. So that's what this machine and my other machine are doing right now. Uh, this will go back to no SSD plotting after. And now we'll look at the all important, how much Chia are you actually making? You see here, I, I got a pretty high difficulty based on the two. I got Farmer and Gigahorse feeding in. If you look at the two plunderers, I love this pirate uh, thing on here. This is how that GPU, the, the discrete GPU, is able to give me all greens. This is on Farmer. And then Gigahorse, a little bit more slow because it's using those two APUs and it has a heck of a lot more plots. But I'm happy with that discrete GPU. You can see there's always one little outlier here. It probably had a timeout or something. But the majority of these are coming in under blue and in green, so a lot quicker than the Gigahorse. Now, as I increase these plots, this will probably get slower, but you can tell I'm still within the uh, amount of time I need to get credit for these. That said, I'm getting pretty regular wins. I got a, like I get a lot in a row and then I get a couple. I love this little icon here. When you farm with Gigahorse, I think it's like 10% of the chance you're gonna have to pay it to max. So this is the only one. You can see I don't get a lot of these because I have my official farmer and Gigahorse both working together and I only get dinged on uh, Gigahorse one. And then finally, the all important number here, I think these are based on the current prices, like 36 or something, so it's like four grand, but that's 128 Chia. I did farm a little bit before this pool, and this isn't taking into account the no SSD ones either. But you can see here, um, it comes out pretty good. You get uh, a lot of payment when you get up to almost two petabyte. Um, and as the price of uh, Chia increases, decreases, I try not to cash out unless it's over 35 or 40. That's been a while, but I did recently get those last few drives because it bumped up to about 35. That said, we go over to no SSD. You can see it pays out about 0.15 a day, something like that. So not a whole lot, but again, I got a lot less plots and it doesn't pay out as much because I just don't have as many plots. So all that said, I do enjoy um, 
Let's see bird's eye view here. Oh yeah, it's just showing me the things on there. But uh, all that said, I do enjoy this whole thing more than just the payouts. Uh, the payouts are nice. They let me buy more hardware and everything. But uh, two petabyte is about where I want to sit. Only because any more than that, you start getting the kind of uh, industrial size stuff. I like having them on the wall. I like not having a lot of noise. And I like they don't take any space at all. You can see the no SSD one I put on top of the fridge. And then the other ones are on the wall. So zero space being taken up by any of those machines. And it's kind of cool to watch them work away.